In the year 1996 the student Yamaok is at a mound site with his professor Soya. Yamaok asks the professor about a strange sedimentation he found and mentions that it almost looks like the side profile of a human laying down. Soya isn't sure what it is and asks Yamaok to dig down a bit more. As Yamaok digs deeper, a skull appears from the dirt. The professor has a theory that this was maybe an ancient burial method where they put many layers of clay on the dead. This way, the tomb would have taken the shape of a giant doll. Yamaok gets excited because of the huge discovery he made. Suddenly it starts to rain and as everybody tries to get cover, Professor Soya takes the skull with him without anyone noticing. In the year 2017 Remy and her mother drive back home from the annual memorial of her father. They reminisce about the time when Remy was a big TV presence because of her modeling career and how much it stressed her out. Remy's mother hugs her and tries to comfort her for all the stress she put on her daughter, but they only earn jealous looks from Remy's older sister Narumi who is currently driving. Narumi starts complaining and calls out her mother for just investing time and money into Remy. But her mother just calls her ugly, which shocks Narumi. She looks back at her mother angrily, which causes the car to drift off and as Narumi tries to save the mess she made, she steers into the forest, resulting in a crash. Narumi slowly wakes up and looks if her mother and sister are well, but Remy's pretty face is just dangling down from a street sign as if it was shaved off. At the hospital, Narumi gets shouted at by her mother for the crash she caused and for what she did to Remy. As the doctor comes out of the room, he tells them that Remy regained consciousness but that something is strange about her. Remy's peeled off skin exposed another layer of face under it. The doctor explains that he did some scans on Remy, he tells them that Remy doesn't have any organs, but instead multiple layers of skin. Remy's entire body is made up of skin tissue and should therefore not even be alive. The doctor gives the rings of a tree as an example, the more rings on the tree stump, the older the tree. Remy must have a similar condition as he can make out her growth process through the layers. The center of the layers is what Remy looked like as a fetus and as she grew older, the more layers she grew outside of her body. He counts up to 20 layers and correlates it to her age. Remy's mother says that there must be a younger version of Remy inside these layers then, deep within her current body. The doctor agrees, but recommends that they should conduct more tests on Remy to find out how she is even alive. Remy's mother denies the tests and decides to take her once pretty daughter back home. The mother tells Narumi to take care of Remy in the future, but Narumi says that she is worried. Narumi reminds her of the skull that her father took home once 21 years ago and the photos her father showed them, it was the burial site with the multiple layers of clay on top of the dead human. Narumi mentions a curse that the tomb must have been cursed and that the curse is now on Remy. Narumi shows her mother a secret she kept for a long time, she opens her mouth and shows her mother, the multiple rows of teeth Narumi has in her mouth. Remy is now back at home and her mother looks after her. Narumi begs her mother to break the curse by holding a memorial service for the skull her dad found, but she won't hear any of it and reassures Remy that she will heal her somehow. She talks down on Remy like a child, and Remy shouts at her for getting belittled as she leaves to go to bed. While Remy sleeps, her mother talks to her as if she was a child and asks the two-year-old Remy to come out of her so she can give her a hug. She stands up to leave the room as she suddenly hears a child inside Remy's body calling for her mama. It's asking for a hug and begs to be let out of their body. Remy's mother doesn't know how to get her out, but she contemplates if she should do what's on her mind. Screams can be heard and Narumi gets out of her room to check on Remy. Her mother is cutting off Remy's outer layer of skin and says that there is no other option than to peel it off until the two-year-old Remy is free again. Narumi screams at her to stop but as she hears the two-year-old child inside as well she falls onto her knees and watches as her mother rips layers of skin from her daughter's face. As her mother is finished, the two-year-old Remy's head looks out of her older body and asks to be held. Her mother shouts at Narumi to help her peel off the older Remy's body as well, and together they start ripping off her skin. But as they are finished they notice that Remy's younger body is missing and that there is only a thin flesh figure left. Narumi mentions that this must be the curse that plagues their family but her mother just silently stands up and starts cutting in her face. Narumi tells her to stop, but she has gone totally insane, and wants to cut her skin off, so she can become younger and give birth to Remy once more. As she peels off her face, it's revealed that she isn't affected by the curse. Narumi enters a dark room with food in her hands, she walks past her mother with bandages on her head. Narumi puts the food on the ground for the young Remy, whose skin now looks like the sediments where the skull was once found all those years ago. The member of the photo club, Tsukiko, asks Michiko about her opinion of a photo of a boy. It's Michiko's crush that Tsukiko secretly took a photo of. Tsukiko's customer rewards her with 3,000 yen for the shot. 
Tsukika knows that she shouldn't shoot photos of people without their knowledge but just at that moment Yamazaki walks by. She asks Yamazaki if she can take some pictures of him as a lot of girls have a crush on him. He agrees and even poses for her while joking that she should make a business out of his photos. Tsukika lies that it's just volunteer work and keeps taking photos. They both suddenly notice a girl watching them from the dark passage. As the mysterious girl gets noticed she turns around and leaves. Yamazaki asks who that girl is and Tsukiko mentions that she is Tami Kawakami, a member of the disciplinary committee that transferred here recently. Tami walks away with her reflection in the camera lens, what a pretty cranium. Later at home, Tsukiko admires her Yamazaki collection as it grows. She has a lot of female customers that buy photos from her, tomorrow Chio and Ma are gonna buy pics from Tsukiko. Ma has the best taste in guys as she has a crush on Humpty Dumpty's cousin. The next day at school Chio complains to Tsukiko that she has to pay 10,000 yen, unlike Ma who just had to pay half of that. While they both argue, Tami appears and asks for Tsukiko's attention. Tami confronts Tsukiko with her actions, shooting and selling boys photos on campus. Tami threatens Tsukiko to tell the teachers what she is doing, but Tsukiko denies that she is selling the photos and acts clueless. But Tami doesn't believe her and orders Taichi, one of Tami's admirers, to search Tsukiko's bag. He knocks Tsukiko's bag out of her hands and hands the photos over to Tommy. She mentions that she will confiscate the photos as part of the disciplinary committee. Tommy tells Tsukiko that she won't snitch to the teachers this time but she has to stop with her business. Tsukiko just stares dumbfoundedly as they leave in a rude manner. Later at the locker room Tsukiko complains about Tommy to her friends. But they tell her to stay out of it, as Tommy and her bodyguards are out of Tsukiko's league. Ma says that Tommy sometimes tells people that she won't snitch on them when she catches them breaking the rules, but then Tommy snitches anyways. Tsukiko wants to hear none of it and just plans to act dumb if she gets confronted again. At lunchtime the girls eat in the school cafeteria and complain about the lost pictures. Suddenly pretty boy Yamazaki shows up and asks to talk to Tsukiko in private. He asks for a favor from her, as he is modeled so often for Tsukiko's photos. Yamazaki wants photos from his crush, Tommy. Tsukiko hesitantly agrees to take the photos for him, as she pretty much has no other choice. She walks over to the place where Tommy hangs out often. Tsukiko hides behind some bushes and waits for the perfect opportunity. As Tommy looks around, Tsukiko snaps some photos like a spy. First from the side, then Tommy turns around some more and Tsukiko keeps shooting. Suddenly Tommy stares directly at the camera, Tsukiko is shocked that she has been caught. Tommy tells her to get out of the bushes. But weirdly enough she seems delighted. She even offers Tsukiko to take as many pictures of her as she likes. Tommy says that she wants Tsukiko to print the photos and scatter them around campus. It's just an empty threat from Tommy and Tsukiko calls her bluff, saying that she will do exactly that if Tommy is serious. Tommy tells her once more to do so and even poses for a couple photos. Tsukiko compliments her beauty and asks Tommy to step back a little to take a full body shot. Tommy tells her that she has to step back as Tommy is doing her a favor with the photos. Tsukiko agrees and starts taking pictures while walking back slowly. As she walks back Tsukiko suddenly bumps into a teacher, it was a trap from Tommy all along to distract Tsukiko until the teacher shows up. Somehow she knew that Tsukiko would try to take photos of her. The teacher scolds her for making a profit out of photos of people without their knowledge. Tommy is overjoyed to have caught Tsukiko red-handed. With Tsukiko being cornered she admits that she made a business out of the photos and tells the teacher that she will quit the photo club to take responsibility for her actions. As Tsukiko leaves she gives Tommy a death stare full of hate. Later at home Tsukiko sits on her bed all sad. She wonders if Yamazaki was in on it and if him and Tommy made a plan together to catch her. Tsukiko's mother calls her and says that she picked up the photos from the print shop which Tsukiko asked her to. They are the photos of Tommy from earlier. She looks at the pictures and gets shocked. It seems like there is another face appearing out of Tommy's head. The next day at school Tsukiko takes Tommy up on her offer, she throws hundreds of copies from Tommy's photos out of the window, for everyone to see. All of the students look at the photos and see the deformed Tommy on it. As Tommy notices the pictures, she gets really angry and asks her two bodyguards for a very important favor. Meanwhile Tsukiko is in the locker room as she rejoices that her revenge plan was a full success. Suddenly Yamazaki bursts in completely out of breath. He tells Tsukiko that she has to hide at this very moment. She doesn't even have time to ask what's going on, as Yamazaki grabs her hand and says that some people are after her. As they start running Yamazaki explains that he overheard the guys from the disciplinary committee talk with Tommy. 
Tommy's body was apparently trembling out of sheer anger. They even made plans to murder her. They are on their way to find and kill her. At the meantime Tommy's goons are looking everywhere for Tsukiko and asking people if they have seen her. Yamazaki is leaning against a door as one of Tommy's bodyguards asks if he has seen Tsukiko, he nods and tells him that he has seen Tsukiko walking further down the hallway. The goon leaves and Yamazaki goes inside the room. Tsukiko was hiding inside the photo club, the worst place to hide in such a situation. They talk about what compelled Tsukiko to scatter Tami's photos everywhere and she explains that it was mostly jealousy and almost confesses her crush on Yamazaki. As she stutters the words of love a rope is suddenly tied around her neck. Yamazaki starts to strangle her all of a sudden as if he went mad. He asks for forgiveness and says that he would do anything for Tami and her beautiful face. As Tsukiko gets strangled she manages to grab a bottle of rubbing alcohol and pours it on his face. She runs away as fast as she can while Yamazaki cries loudly out of pain. After a couple of days Tsukiko is sitting at home as she gets scolded by her mother for the school suspension she got for scattering the photos of Tommy. Her mother gets so frustrated with Tsukiko that she leaves for the rest of the week to be with her husband. Tsukiko is now alone at home but she doesn't seem to really care. As she looks outside the window she notices Tommy's bodyguards standing around, looking for her. Tsukiko crouches down and tries to leave as she suddenly gets frightened. Tommy is standing at the end of the hallway. She is just standing there, menacingly. She invites Tsukiko to have a chat as they have things to talk about. Tsukiko asks Tommy if it is true that she wanted to kill her. Tommy laughs it off and denies that she would ever do such a thing. Tsukiko tells her that Yamazaki tried to kill her and that he is under Tommy's spell. Tommy says that she isn't a witch and that she doesn't know someone named Yamazaki. Apparently it's all a big misunderstanding but the look in Tsukiko's eyes shows her suspicions. Tommy offers her food and drink as a peace offering and to apologize for the suspension from the school. Tsukiko declines her offer and Tommy tries to make conversation again. As Tommy sees the pictures on the wall she starts telling a made-up story about how her dad knew Picasso and how her mother is a famous actress from Spain. Tsukiko gets fed up with the made-up stories and tells Tommy that she must have some form of mental illness and that she is a hideous monster. As soon as Tommy hears these words she starts mumbling the words hideous and monster and how anybody could call her that. Tommy starts trembling again and cowers on the floor as if she was in pain. She tells the voices in her head to stop but without success. Tsukiko tells her to stop with the show and walks towards Tommy to take a closer look at her. She looks at Tommy and notices something in her head, an eye looking crazily at all directions. Tommy's goons hear her screams and run upstairs to see what's going on. They notice Tommy's second head and are understandably confused. Tommy orders for the head to be cut off as she is scared and crying. The boys cut into the head to remove the scary head, while a tied up Tsukiko is watching. Tsukiko looks at the happenings with fear in her eyes, just like her camera she is locked onto the scene. The guys manage to cut Tommy's evil head off, but just like their taste in girls their aim is also bad. Tommy's whole head is gone and she is lying on the floor without any movement. The boys start arguing because Tommy unalived, but they think that all will be alright because nobody saw them behead Tommy, except for Tsukiko. Tsukiko pretends to be asleep but the boys notice her bad acting. They start asking if she saw anything and try to justify their deeds as all of a sudden one of Tommy's heads wakes up. Its eyes wide open with hair coming out of everywhere on its skin. It starts screaming and orders the boys to burn the other head as it will wake up otherwise. The boys put Tommy's heads inside a bag and leave to follow her orders while leaving the tied up Tsukiko behind. Tsukiko struggles and tries to free herself as she notices strange movements. The headless body came back to life and with it another head inside of the neck. It notices the crying Tsukiko and starts walking in her direction. As it walks towards her it luckily changes its mind and starts running out of the house. After a while Tsukiko manages to free herself and just sits there staring at her camera and the camera with Tommy's headless body in the reflection staring back thanks for watching subscribe for more